is actually Hizb al-Shaytan. But many people don't know. But there will be special lecture, inshallah, dedicated to these wicked, uh, wicked losers, uh, which who, you all know who they are. I will leave their name as a mystery and a uh, you know, surprise for you. Uh, we will give a special lecture about them, inshallah ta'ala, in the future. So we will know the reality of these people who speak on behalf of Islam and Muslims and have caused a lot of corruption and given us a horrible reputation among the non-Muslims with their silly behavior and their un-Islamic conduct. But that's then, inshallah ta'ala. So, do I hear a phone ringing? I think so. So these are the standards of Allah. Of course, I quoted only some ayat. Time doesn't allow to give you more, but if you read the Quran, and I'm sure inshallah you all do in a language which you understand, if it is Arabic or if it's another language than that language, you will come across many ayat that describe the muflihun and the khasirun. But I will actually summarize them with two ayat, two ayat, or like them, one surah and one ayat. Uh, concerning the, uh, the concept, the, the summary of this, these ayat I gave you. Allah says, تِلْكَ الدَّارُ الْآخِرَةُ نَجْعَلُهَا لِلَّذِينَ لَا يُرِيدُونَ عُلُوًّا فِي الْأَرْضِ وَلَا فَسَادًا وَالْعَاقِبَةُ لِلْمُتَّقِينَ This life of the hereafter, we shall only assign for those who do not seek exaltedness in the earth, nor do they seek corruption. And the good end is for the pious, the righteous, the God conscious. So once you seek corruption on earth, and once you seek exaltedness, meaning rejecting the truth, spreading sins, if you are among those who spread sins, some of us, the, the nature of his job or her job is one who spreads evil. If you install satellite dishes, Allah al musta'an, right? Because you open in the door for these people to destroy themselves and their families. And you know they go, if you know the channels, you know they will have these wicked channels. If it was Islamic channels, barakallah fi. Go and install as many dishes as you want. But if it's otherwise, then this job is among the people who are spreading corruption upon earth. They, they are included in this ayah. And Allah said that the hereafter is not for these individuals. Some jobs are very, very, you know, uh, you know strategic in spreading good or spreading evil. And we need to be careful. What is your job? Do you develop softwares? If you do, what kind of softwares? Are you an IT? And so every time we open some of these web pages, we get music in the background. Are you the one responsible while you being a Muslim? And how many people visit that website? How many hits? All of them will be on your book of deeds. It's not a joke. Uploading a picture, as we mentioned a million times to these Facebook losers and Facebook, I'm sorry, Facebook users. Well, I wanted to say users, but it was a slip of a tongue, it was losers. Perhaps some of them will be losers as well. May Allah make us all among the winners. But this, we're speaking about loss and win, so this just uh, came out. The Facebook users, and not losers, have told them a million times, Ya Akhi, Ya Habibi, you want to give da'wah, he gets you a naked woman, a naked woman who's not wearing hijab, says, sisters, this is not hijab. Ya Akhi, we know this is not hijab. But now you had 50 million brothers, you know, all over the world, look at this lady. And you don't know the people's ideas, thoughts, and whatever. You are responsible for everyone who looks at her against this, and you will get an equal evil deed, according to the people you misled. Maybe she will come to him in the salah. Maybe, you know, the shaitan plays in, in funky ways. And you give him the door. You want to tell the sister to wear the proper hijab? Put an article about the right hijab. Khalas. No need for pictures of naked women. And the same thing we say to the sisters who upload their pictures on Facebook. And, and, and again, they love to pose. It's not actually, she must be pose with a niqab. But there's that seductive look. What does that mean? You know, what does that mean? When you are making this, you are creating, creating evil and havoc among the Muslims. But I, many of them are innocent. We assume that they intend good, they don't know any better, but that's not an excuse. Now we need to cut this stuff out. This is among those who are spreading evil in the communities. So we have to be very careful. Sometimes the akhwan, and you know, go back to other lectures, the music we've discussed. Do not forward the emails. These emails that we send all day forward again, these are among the means that spread major corruption with a click of a button, with a mouse click. We don't know, if some people for them to cause corruption they have to buy weapons and bomb places and some people do it behind on the keyboard. And the one behind the keyboard may be more sinful than the one out there in the field. Depending on what you're sending and what you're doing. 
So each one of us has to be very sensitive, very delicate about what you upload, what you share, what you send. Not every time you see a video of something that you must share it with everyone else. The, the majority of videos out there do, should not be shared. Either you have a brother giving a lecture or you have something else. Seriously. Yeah, once you get other stuff, then you will get other fitna involved. So I advise myself and you, be very sensitive. Because this mass, the media, the media today, technology, it's a, it's a double-edged sword. It can help the da'wah and it can destroy you quickly. If you start giving fatawa and sharing them among hundreds of people, and you know, as many people do today, and you're not supposed to be given fatawa, then you are now gaining the sin of everyone who follows your wicked opinion. And the list goes on. So be very careful, my brothers in Islam. And the other surah, Surah Al-Asr, everyone knows it. Allah Azza wa Jal swore by the passage of time, human being is immersed, he's sunk in loss, except those who believe, do righteous deeds, and enjoin one another and remind one another of good uh, and sabr, right? Uh, the truth, I'm sorry, and patience. And you know, refer to the, the, the talks of Brother Nu'man, he has a very uh, interesting and beneficial uh, tafsir of Surah Al-Asr. I believe it's in three parts. But mashallah, tabarakallah, it's extremely beneficial. And really see what are the standards of Allah. And how many of us are fulfilling these four conditions with, without them. If you have three out of four, out of four, you're a loser. Two out of four, you're a loser. One out of four, you're a loser. Zero out of four, forget it. Four out of four. Each one of us to be guaranteed success must be a believer, correct belief, must be doing righteous deeds and must be also enjoining and helping others according to, the, uh, according to the truth and upon the truth and patience. These are not easy qualities. They require a lot of striving and effort. But according to Allah, if we don't have them, we will be among the losers. So where are we going with our lives? Now we all know in order to succeed, we need to materialize these four qualities. <coughs> but let me be frank with you. I'm sure, like myself, many of you try. We strive to accomplish and establish and materialize these four qualities in our lives. But guess what? What do we often have? We have obstacles. We have obstacles that obstruct our path, that, that blind us, that prevent us from moving on. Even though we're trying to do the Iman and the righteous deeds and the truth and the uh, patience, being patient in the process, very often, you will find that we will come across some things that will divert us from the path. We thought we were going straight, next thing you know we're going in the other direction. What is the main reason? Sins. Sins. Sins in general and particularly sins which we do not seek repentance from. Sins in general are the main reason for destruction. But if you really want to be destroyed, and I'm sure no one wants to be destroyed, then the sins which we do not repent from are the main reason behind the destruction. They are the reasons for destruction. Just think about it in the most basic fashion. Adam and Eve, our parents. May Allah uh, uh, be pleased with them and send His blessings upon them. Were they expelled from paradise because of anything but sin? It was a sin. Not many sins, not hundreds of sins. It was a single act of disobedience. Don't eat from this tree. They ate from this tree. And look, what, look, the consequence of that one sin is what we are living at the very moment. And what billions and trillions of people lived before and what billions and trillions of people will live after because of one thing. Allah sent us down to earth and decreed that we will go through this test and He gave shaitan some authority and all this is because of this one sin of Adam and Eve. That's one sin. How many sins do we have every day? Shaitan, Iblis, <coughs> what got him out from the ranks of the Malaika? And what expelled him from Jannah? And what made him to be the cursed? As Shaitanul La'een, the cursed, as Shaitanul Rajeem, the one who's been distanced from Allah and he's kicked away. He's, he's away and far. What made him what he is today? A sin. Prostrate to Adam, he did not prostrate to Adam. Nuh, the people of Nuh, what caused uh, the earth, uh, the water to actually drown them? It was sins. Ad, Thamud, every single nation 
Fir'aun, Qarun, you name them. The reason why they were destroyed were sins. This, these are the consequences of sins. Some sins are destructive more than others. But all sins in general will affect us. Now what I will do right now is enumerate to you a number of consequences of sins. And I want each and every one of us to analyze these, these uh, actual points, these bullet points, and see how many of us are, how many of them are actually affecting us in our lives. Because you will see, say, oh yeah, I think that this applies to me. You will see that the sins, what the sins do to us. First, the first consequence of sins is deprivation of knowledge, being deprived of knowledge. When we find that we really don't know Islam much, or the, the little bit that we know, we don't understand. Everything always seems complicated, and we always need to get help from someone else. And we don't depend on ourselves in learning the deen. We don't make any effort. If we are being deprived of sin, of knowledge, then this is the first and among the most uh, you know, uh, scary consequences of sins, that you will be deprived of beneficial knowledge. And you all know the story of Waqiyah, شَكَوْتُ لِوَكِيعَ سُوَى حِفْظِ فَأَرْشَدِ لِي تَرْكِ الْمَعَاصِ وَقَالَ إِنَّ عِلْمَ اللَّهِ نُورٌ وَنُورُ اللَّهِ لَا يُهُدَى لِعَاصِ Imam Shafi'i complained to Waqiyah. He said, I complained to him my inability to memorize. And even though he used to memorize a lot, but what he considered to be inability to memorize. So he told me, leave alone sins. Because the light, the knowledge of Allah is light. And Allah does not grant his light to the disobedient. And we have many evidences also which support Allah says, وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهِ وَيُعَلِّمُكُمُ اللَّهِ Have taqwa of Allah, Allah will teach you. Meaning when you don't have taqwa of Allah, you will not be taught. Right? وَمَن يُؤْمِن بِاللَّهِ يَهْدِ قَلْبَهِ Whosoever believes in Allah, Allah shall guide his heart. يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا إِن تَتَّقُوا اللَّهِ يَجْعَلْ لَكُمْ فُرْقَانًا If, O you who have believed, if you have taqwa of Allah, He will give you the criterion. You'll be able to distinguish between good and bad, truth and falsehood, guidance and misguidance, and so on and so forth. So, the sin will affect your Islamic knowledge. If for the last 10 years we still know the same ayah and the same narration, and we're doing the same thing, nothing has changed in our lives, then this is probably because, because of our sins. We must learn new azkar. There are many azkar. Do we have all of them memorized? Do we actually apply every dhikr in the morning, in the evening, before the restroom, after the restroom, before we eat? After eating, there are, there's at least three to four authentic narrations from the Prophet ﷺ as to what to say after concluding your meal. Most of us may know only one. Alhamdulillah. Right? But there's actually more. Alhamdulillah alladhi at'amani hadha wa razaknihi min ghayri hawlim minni wa la quwa. Whoever says that after the meal, Allah should forgive his previous sins. That's a big deal. But all you have to do is memorize three sentences, right? And the list goes on. If we're not doing that, guess what? Our sins are keeping us away. Second, rizq, deprivation of sustenance. There's a hadith from the Prophet Sallallahu The scholars have differed about the authenticity. And Shaykh Al-Bani Rahimullah had mentioned this hadith to be da'if in a number of his books. However, he authenticated it in another one. Uh, Sheikh bin Baz and others have authenticated the narration. So I'm quoting it based on the fact that some of the ulama authenticated it, including Sheikh Al-Bani rahimahullah, even though in other books he said that it is da'if. So Allah alam which one came later. Either way, because of other ulama authenticating it, and even though we love Sheikh Al-Bani rahimahullah, we believe that the, the chain, you know, this, the, the train of narrators support this hadith and make it sound. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi said, Inna al-abd la yuhram al-rizq bi yusibuh. Verily, the slave will be deprived of risk, some sustenance, some provision, because of a sin which he commits. Yeah, Allah will have decreed for you a wonderful job and a good salary, and if you're not married, a good wife, you know, is waiting down the line, and everything will